What's going on, everybody? My name is Jake Butt. I am here with my former teammate, my friend, and headline grabber, if you've been around the football world in the USFL these past couple of days, Davion Smith. What's going Davion, on? Listen, man, I, I think we should just get straight into it. Give people a little background about what happened. Davion was in the USFL, was playing for the Pittsburgh Maulers, running back, and was cut over what he's going to tell you, a piece of pizza. That's the intro. But Davion, if you could just kind of give us the run up to it and what that exact moment was like. Um, so basically, Jake, uh, well, thanks for having me on the show, by the way. But um, it started off, get off, get off, get done with practice, head straight up to uh, the cafeteria, which is right, right in the main lobby. And, what time uh, is this by? What time is this by now? Like 12, 12 o'clock. So you had breakfast already in the day, or you you, what, yeah, you okay. breakfast during the day? We just got done with practice, so we're done for the day. Basically, we got meetings later on in the day. Uh, just around like 12, 20, 12 o'clock. Um, I go see what's for lunch, and I see it's a chicken salad. And I know I don't eat chicken salad; never have, never liked it. So I see this guy downstairs holding a thousand, like I'm talking eight or nine, ten, ten. 10, like maybe 10 boxes of uh, pizza. And I go tell the guy, I'm like, hey, I think this guy's down here waiting for you guys um, to come pay him or something. And was, this, so, was this guy a hotel employee or he's a pizza no. delivery guy? Pizza delivery guy. Pizza delivery guy and operations guy. I've never had a conversation. I don't know why they said I had spoken with a hotel worker or a cafeteria worker. That never okay. happened. Okay. Um, and then, um, where was I talking about? the? So, you're, so you see the pizza delivery guy, you okay. say, hey. I see the pizza delivery guy. And I tell the dude in uh, operations, hey, I think this dude is down there waiting for you guys. Um, there's a whole bunch of pizza down there. He goes out, grabs the pizza, and I see a chicken salad, like I said. Uh, I asked the guy, I was like, hey, is there, is there any way I can get a uh, slice of pizza? He said, no, your guys' food is right there. It's chicken salad. Is that going to be a problem? I said, yes. I don't eat chicken salad. And then I walked away. I didn't even say, yes, I don't eat chicken salad. I said, yes. And then I walked away. And, and from that point, right, I walk away. The guy asked me what my name was. I say, Davion Smith. And I didn't think anything of it. I didn't say it any, like, in a rude manner or anything. I said, Davion Smith. As I'm walking away, coming to find out, they let that whole thing slide. They let it go by. We, I had meetings with my coaches, everything. Not not one thing was mentioned to me about the incident. The rest or, of the night. The rest of the night. The next morning, 7 o'clock, is the first time I'm hearing about the incident when I was on TV. Well, being recorded. When they, when they were recording. So the people that are out there will try to link a video here for this. John Peterson, personnel director. What's up, man? Good morning, man. Well, he crossed the line. So we had to deal with it. This is very difficult for me as a head coach. It's my first time, but we have a business. Okay, this is a business, and you're a businessman. We all are. It's that's the nature of the beast right now. But uh, when I first talked to you guys on March 22nd, I had a handbook. I covered some items that were very important to me. Line 46 addresses that. Any disrespect of football or members, staff, USFL, hotel, etc would not be tolerated. And it's been brought to my attention that has occurred with you. So unfortunately, unfortunately, hear me out, unfortunately, cost of doing business, I'm going to have to let you go. Okay? I didn't think I did anything or said anything disrespectful. I, I can tell you what happened exactly. It's not important right now. Right. It's not important. I don't it's, know. It's already happened. Right. It's already happened. I didn't say anything disrespectful. He said, is that going to be a problem? I said, yes. I said, and I walked away. I mean, I didn't think that was disrespectful. Me saying yes, I don't eat chicken salad. And I was like, is there another option? Walked in with pizza, and I was like, can I get a slice of pizza? He said, no. I was like, he said, is that going to be a problem? I said, yes. That's all I said. I didn't say no cuss word, nothing. That's all I said. I promise you, no disrespectful on my dad's life. I promise you, I didn't say nothing disrespectful besides yes. And I appreciate you sharing that, but the matter is, it's done. 
but good luck. The people that are out there get to see the moment behind the scenes when you get called into the, the coach's room as well as right. the front office of the team, right? And they call you in. What was the phone call like? Uh, it wasn't even a phone call. It was a text. I a got text, text at 7 a.m. Yeah, 7.05, exactly. And okay. it's, uh, hey, Davion, come down. We uh, come Just come down to the meeting room real fast because we had walkthrough at 7.30. So I didn't think, think – I didn't really think anything of it. I was like, maybe coaches – maybe they want to talk to me about something. I don't know. Uh, I get to the meeting room. I see there's cameras outside. And I'm like, what? that's kind of weird. Um, and then I go in the room, shake all, all three of the guys' hands. Um, I didn't even know there was a camera in there. I saw the cameras that were outside. But the camera in there, I didn't know it was in there. Kind of caught me off, caught me by surprise, too, that it was on TV. But um, that was when you guys heard it on that video. That was really my first time, like, hearing it when that actually happened to me nothing was brought up to me about any rule breaks that i had i know they put out uh i broke three rules within 24 hours would you so for the people that haven't seen it though can you paint us the picture as you're walking into this building you have you definitely don't think it's about the the lunch incident but no, you're not so you're walking into this meeting and these meetings could be anything coach might say hey we're going to give you more reps today hey are you good on this route today right. This meeting could be anything. This is your coach calling you into the meeting. You have no idea. And then could you walk us through the details of what happened there? Uh, all right. So you, I walk in. I shake um, Chris Watts' hand. Boom. And I, and I think his name was John or something like that. Oper another operations guy. And then my coach sits down. I dap him up. I sit there and talk to him. Oh, I'm not even talking to him. Like He said, Davion, this is how it is. And what you see in the video in that instance, I'm feeling like, like, what is this too weird? Like, where is this going? Like, why, what, what the heck happened? So I'm sitting there confused. If you look at my face, I'm just like, what? And then I don't know, like, yeah, I was feeling mad, but I'm, I'm happy. I handled that situation. Well, they probably expected me to um, lash out or do something crazy, but I think I handled myself pretty well in that situation. And I, I personally didn't like the fact that he didn't let me get my word in or even come to me prior to the situation or prior to me being released. It, it was kind of one-sided. So I'm happy the video got out there, which I didn't know it was there, but I'm happy it was there. So as you're in this room, I remember they asked you your side of the story, what happened. And you told them exactly what you no, just he, told me. He, they didn't. What happened? He didn't care about my side of the story. He says it in the video. He said, I don't care. The decision has already been made. He asked, you explained yourself, correct? Yeah, I, you I explained, explained it. Because I like, because I was like, there's no way I'm not saying what happened. There's, I was like, there's no possible way. I'm not saying that this is, uh, this is what happened. So it's safe to say going into that meeting, the decision was made. 100%. You, Absolutely. If you go back and look at the video, that decision was made before I even woke up this morning or anything, even before they even texted me, I'll bet you that decision was already made. I want to go back to previous team meals. So you had breakfast that day and I, we, we, but we've sat in team meals together. Typically yeah, yeah, yeah. you have, you have a big spread. You're feeding right. big football right. players. You have eggs, you have bacon, you have potatoes, you have bagels, you have coffee. It's a big spread. So people, if you don't like eggs, you eat extra bacon or a bagel. If you don't like bacon, you eat extra eggs. What was lunch? This wasn't your first lunch or team dinner. What had those previous meals been like? And then this specific meal was just a bowl of chicken salad. No, it was a sandwich of chicken salad. Oh, it was just okay. It was a sandwich of chicken salad. That was the only thing we had for lunch that day. But prior to those, pr prior to that, uh, even later on that night, uh, I, I believe we we had Mexican. I mean, Mexican food. Uh, uh, maybe some tacos from what I remember. I can't really remember up, up to that point. It was, it was pretty solid. Like I, I can't, I really wasn't really complaining, but it was just like, I was so hungry. You had just practiced. I mean, you just walked I, off I two and a half hours of practice. You're playing football. You need to eat. You know, you know what I mean? It, it was just like, dude, is that really our only option to eat right now? And obviously it wasn't because there was pizza in the building. You know what I mean? It's not like I asked for a whole box. I asked to do four slice and no, but no, yeah. Prior to that, the, the food was pretty solid. I have no complaints about it. Um, going back, maybe do I regret anything? 
No, because I didn't say anything wrong. I just don't understand why. I really don't understand why they decided to take. They probably this is probably like one of my last times I can really strap on a helmet, strap on the pads, and do, you know what I love. And it, and they just stri- took it away from me like it was nothing. Like yeah. I don't know that I was I was hot. I'm not even gonna lie to you, but yeah. It is what it is. So, so, so let me go. let me play devil's advocate here because from their from their perspective, it probably wasn't anything but that that question when he said, "Is this going to be a problem?" And you said yes. Yep. Now yeah. they're they're they probably it sounds like they interpreted that as a as a threat, but without context, what you're clearly saying and I've continued to say is. It was a conversation. Is that going to be a problem? Yes, I'm hungry. I just got done practicing. Yes, that is a problem. I need to eat. Is is that your point of view, or, or yeah. do you think it was that yeah. exact moment that caused the issue? It has to be because I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything crazy. Like I didn't. I didn't break any rules, bro. And for them to even say I broke three is, I don't. This laughable. Have you had convers- Have you tried to contact them? Have you had conversations with them after the fact, or was it pretty clear that this well, is after, just it? After the fact, I was I was down in Atlanta staying with my brother, and I was trying to get back on the team. I'm like, I was I'm so I'm so confused. I'm like, I'm asking coach. I'm like, hey, give me a second chance. I didn't do anything. Like something. I didn't do anything. Like what? What did I do? And for me to for me to get released, and I don't know. He he kind of heard me out, I guess. He said he had never talked down on my name, he, X, X, Y, and Z, but... This is the head coach. Yeah, this is the head coach. This is me and Kirby Wilson. I'm talking to... I'm even talking to our operations guy. He, he's, he said, if, if you need anything, I'm there for you. Uh, I'm talking to the running back coach, Will Johnson. What does that if mean? I, like, dude, if you need anything, you, what do you need? You need a job. Yeah, Russell, man, like, y'all just took my livelihood, possibly, for nothing. For for and uh, I don't even want to say I'm not going to say the dude's name because I still want to play ball. That's the most important thing to me, honestly. I can care less about anything else. There, he must have went in there and said I said some absurd stuff for him for my coach to release me the next day because the day before that, my aunt had passed, so. And my coach saying, keep my head up, do this, 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 and this. We're here for you, X, Y, and Z. But 24, what, 48 hours later, you're kicking me off the team. So that's mind-blowing. First off, it's absolutely insane that we're doing an interview over uh, chicken salad, bro. I honestly it, – it's, it's hard for me to believe. I can imagine it's it was surreal for you. But I think there's a time and place for – rules are in place. Some of them have to be black and white. Like, yes, this is where we draw the line. And if we let people cross that line, we're going to erode the culture. We're going to erode the league. To me, this does not seem like a scenario. It it felt like this was pressed into something that it really wasn't. And that there was definitely some black and white here and some room to have conversation and fluidity. Right. There was definitely room for us to have a conversation about it, but it just it didn't happen beforehand. And I don't understand why, because it's not like we didn't have time. We probably got out that day around like three thirty. What happens in these leagues typically, and this goes for the NFL, the NBA, same for the USFL, most most major sports leagues, is when you get kicked off a team. Right. There's only it becomes a narrative and it becomes an identity. So it's it's not like they can say, hey, other teams are saying, oh, it was just a chicken salad. You know, that is a tough label to wear. So it wasn't just missing this opportunity, which was already hard for you to get back. And like we talked about before the call, you have a, a, a very small infant set of twins, a boy and a girl, and you worked hard to get back in this opportunity. But it's exactly. not just this opportunity. It makes it that much harder to get back in. What is your agent saying, and, and wh- where's your head at with that? Uh, I mean, just got to keep my head down and keep working, and hopefully we get a get lucky, get a call. But I can like like is there back. communication with other teams? Do are other have other teams been made aware? 
I'm pretty, I mean, I, I think they were made aware of me being released and being a free agent. I think, um, but your desire to come back and continue. Playing. Yeah. Cause yeah. that's what it was before prior to this, they were telling me I couldn't come back for some yeah. reason. And I had talked to Brian Woods and I was like, I asked him, could I come back? Cause I got other information from, uh, somebody that works for them and said, no, you won't be able to come back from what I've been told. I was just like, to, to the league they're would, saying that's it yeah, yeah. They're, yes it was they were saying that to me but i got clarification from brown was that i was able to come back it just made me not with that team which i was fine with it's just like all right well hopefully somebody calls me soon you know i'm, I'm already missed out on the game check and what three weeks of practice and they yeah. were paying come on and I got game you. and game film and game ultimately film. you're trying to get back to the nfl Exactly. And it's just that it's frustrating for sure. But I'm going to keep my head and uh, do what I do and just keep my head down and keep working. Man, brother, I can't believe that we are having this conversation right now. Yeah, over podcast. I can't. Uh, it's I should, uh, <laughs> was there food in the hotel lobby? Was there any like what? what to get to this point, was there f- other food or what were your options in this scenario? You had time chicken on your hand, you had to go to a me- chicken salad. That's all it was for lunch that day. That's all it was. It wasn't a, no, nothing. There was nothing else for us to eat that day. They didn't have a turkey sandwich. Did Jake, I'm being serious, they only had a chicken salad. I grabbed me an apple and walked up to my room after practice. It's not like before practice, like you can eat light, but yeah. after practice, you're hungry. Now you got to eat, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Listen, man, uh, that's tough. I, I really admire the way you carried yourself through this, bro, and you, you've stayed true to yourself and been honest. Um, I'm pulling for you, bro. I mean, we played together. I know exactly what you can do as a running back. Pitbull Smitty back there, baby. The first man was never bringing him down. The first man was never bringing him down. You probably need to. Talk to him. That's what I'm saying, man. I was about to come in this league. Oh, man. Tear him up. Um, For sure. There's not in your character, brother. You're going to be all right. Things will be all right, man. It, but I appreciate you hopping on here and, and, and giving a chance to, to tell the whole story to people out there and, and for people listening and understanding how hard this path is and, and, Here's your opportunity to to go prove yourself, to ultimately get back into the NFL and support your family, your newborn kids and your wife. And it can be taken away this quickly. It's a it's a very tough lesson and a tough story for a lot of people to hear. So I appreciate you opening up about that. No problem, bro. Appreciate you. Thank you for having me. I always love you, booty. Love you, too, brother. (laughs) Best of luck to you, man. All right, bro.